Brendan Jackson and Brian Welsh, both former United players, and bring back Joe McLaughlin and Chris Jackson as they try to make it three home wins on the trot. Dundee United show two changes as they go for 18 wins undefeated. Ray McKinnon and Dave Bowman are out, with Mark Perry and Jimmy Dolan returning. There's Barry Levetti, who hopefully has put his injury and other problems behind him. He's come into the hip side at a vital time and is capable of getting a few goals in the run-in. Shell Olufsen is joint top scorer at United with 13 goals at just £400,000. He's been a real bargain for manager Tommy McLean. He's signed till the summer of 1999. The referee is Mike Pocock from Aberdeen. So United kick off down the Easter Road slope, having won just one of the last 13 league matches here. And they've scored just six goals. On the other hand, uh, Hibs have taken five of the nine league points against United this season. Well, they're the only Premier side United have failed to beat. It's a bright day here, but uh, rather blustery, which will make things a bit difficult for both sets of players. But a lot at stake. For Hibernian, United, of course, chasing the European spot on uh, two fronts uh, through the UEFA Cup and Scottish Cup. In fact, United are due back here next week on Scottish Cup semi-final business against Kilmarnock. So an early free kick to Hibernian. It's uh, Chris Jackson drafted back into the side this afternoon, preparing to take this one. Darren Dodds has uh, pushed forward. Uh, Joe McLaughlin is up there as well. But it's an easy catch in the end for the tall figure of Sieb Dijkstra, who immediately starts an attack. It's played in by Presley. Another high ball. It's an awkward one from McLaughlin. He doesn't get it away properly. And the shot going in there from Shell Olufsen. Almost caught Jim Layton. It was certainly struck with plenty of power. Joe McLaughlin there was uh, struggling to clear. And Shell Olofsson with a shot, and uh, Jim Layton took it at the second attempt. This is Winters. Olofsson and trying to get it through there in the direction of uh, McLaren. It uh, was uh, read by McCroken. That's a corner kick. Certainly United have uh, been spending a lot more time in the Hibernian half. Just, uh, ten minutes or so. And we're looking to cash in. Hey, he's going far. Get up! for that one, it was just beyond him. Oh, McKimmy was caught there. The Hibs are pulling players forward now, this is Lavetti. Powell's calling for it. Well, Pedersen was there. Hibs fans are claiming a foul. Certainly, Pedersen made contact there just on the edge of the area. Oh, Malpass let that one go. And it was Pat McGinley who pushed through in goal. Dykstra got the touch on it. Well, Malpass, who's normally so reliable in this type of situation, let the ball drop in behind them. The goalkeeper come out here, just got the touch, as Pat McGinley threatened. And Morris Malpass, who hit that uh, high one there, just looked on in frustration. Jimmy Dolan, Kimmy, Dolan again, it comes off Charlie, that's Pat McGinley, Jackson, oh, that's Q now by Charlie, but uh, he simply nipped it away from Zetterlin, but uh, here's Dolan putting it through, the heads are struggling here, it's Dolan! Well, a comedy of errors there, 
mistake after mistake by Hibernian. Chris Jackson it was who tried to get it away in the final analysis and Dolan came in with his effort wide. It was mistakes all the way across their own penalty area there by Hibernian defenders. And uh, Dolan almost pounced here. Olofsson was attempting there to get away from Dodge, didn't quite come off for him. Long one from Willie Miller, and it's a good one this time. Again, Malpass is caught, the chance is on here, and Dykstra does well there against Lee Park. Well, good long ball forward. Again, it dropped in by Malpass, Lee Power was on it, and uh, see Dykstra come out here to make the block. And also got the goal kick out of it. Charlie and McLaughlin getting in one another's way. This is Dolan. And kick against Olofsson. Foul on Charlie. And the referee wants that one taken again. Well, McLaughlin and Charlie. Uh, having a real go at one another, and the referee will speak to both players. Now, this stems from just a few moments ago, when in actual fact uh, the players got in one another's way, and there was an angry exchange between them at that point. Joe McLaughlin was certainly unhappy with Charlie, and it has continued. Well, when you're trying to escape and fight against relegation, and you have players fighting among themselves, it hardly helps a managerial cause. Well, the two players are yellow carded, quite extraordinary. Maybe if they can channel their energies against the opposition, that might help. Tresley was struggling with that one. Looks away now to Levetti. Support comes from Chris Jackson. Chanley calls for it. Willie Miller's breaking in the far side. Miller drives it across. It's away by Presley. off there by Winters, this is Olofsson, McLaren's breaking the far side, a lot of space. Here's McLaren coming in on the far side! So unlucky, off the post, well he'd made a lot of space for himself, and Shell Olofsson did ever so well to get that ball across in his direction. Still United have it, it's Zetterland. Well, Shell Olofsson drove the ball all the way across field, having spotted McLaren making space for himself, and his effort thumped off Jim Layton's left-hand post. Away by McQuilkin, and uh, Perry's under pressure here, he just got the touch on it ahead of Levetti, and Dijkstra had to look lively. Three checks his watch, checks with his two assistants. The whistle sounds. Well, not the best of uh, first halves, but uh, the conditions difficult overhead and uh, underfoot. But uh, certainly Andy McLaren came uh, closest to scoring in that first half. Good ball delivered. From the far side uh, from Shell Olofsson, in came McLaren and slammed it off the post at uh, Easter Road. It's a Bernie nil, Dundee United nil. To get excited about in that first half. Entry by Chris Jackson. The home fans going as uh, Lee Power pushes forward. And an early corner. There's Hibbs play down the slope in the second half. And set the Dobing to apply a bit more pressure. 
to the United defence. Stanley sends it in, the goalkeeper struggling here. Once again for such a, a tall goalkeeper. Dykstra settles into problems there. Stays in his line as United try to get it away. Darren Dodds comes in. McLaughlin's there as well. And the effort going in from Paul Tosh. But certainly the corner kick from Charnley will cause a problem for the goalkeeper. Again, in these uh, difficult windy conditions, came for it and flapped a bit. by Malpass, Lovetti's on to it, good play by Lovetti, but they couldn't get the power into the shot. Well, he pounced on the mistake by Morris Malpass, showed good control, but couldn't get any real dig into the shot. Play by Lovetti. Uh, the final ball it was ahead of Paul Tosh and uh, Dykstra now is getting involved after that challenge by the Hibs player see Dykstra reacting angrily and he's going to be cautioned the yellow card is shown as we watch the incident well there didn't seem to be an awful lot in that and, uh, the keeper protested too much and now He's been spoken to by his own player, by Stephen Presley. Well, Presley went over there to Dykstra and told him to get on with it. And he certainly made a meal of that situation, got himself a yellow card. So it really has been a bit of a bizarre afternoon with uh, players from the same side. One another's throats. Still we await the opening goal. Let's push players forward again. This is the power. That's a good ball. And just inches away from Paul Tosh. The well, home fans are a bit happier now with the Hibs performance. Power it was who swung in the cross of just inches away. Dodds. So Betty with no pass. A little nudge there by the United player. Free kick to Hibbs. Well, United doing a lot more defending in the second half. Chandler plays it through to Paul Tosh. Good angle ball. And the header from Lavetti. Over the top. And there are some more promising. Signs from Hibs in the second half. Well, they've all been tight matches between these sides this season. 1 0 to Hibs at Tannadice, and 1 uh, 1 here at Easter Road, followed by 0 0 at Tannadice, and 0 0 it is here at Easter Road this afternoon with some 21 minutes of this second half gone. Here's a chance on Shell Olofsson, who threatened in the first half. Well, a real opportunity for him there. Again, just in front of the defender, but uh, over the top. Darren Dodds, fires in the Hyman, McGinley is there, he wins it well. Oh, that's a good effort uh, going in from Lee Power. Excellent effort uh, from Power. Pat McGinley winning that one well. And uh, good turn here. There was a deflection on it. Just carried it past the post. Swigan was struggling there. Charlie sends it in. Whoa. Taken at the second attempt by Dykstra. 
These are difficult conditions. Here come United again. And it's just beyond Shell Olofsson. Presley provides a cover, maybe not enough, but uh, that's a penalty. Yeah, he certainly held on to Lee Park. And the referee has awarded the penalty kick, and this could mean that Presley is off. Well, Lee Parr certainly had him in trouble there. He was shot with a pass back, and he certainly held on to the Hibernian player as he ran through in goal. This could well be a red card for Stephen Presley. You see him holding on to the Hibs player. And certainly, as the last defender, he should be ordered off for this. It was a goal-scoring opportunity. The referee is making it quite plain to him. Well, Presley waits, and it's a red card. The referee had no alternative. And that's a blow for United in terms of uh, not just this afternoon, but it also puts Presley out of the... Scottish Cup semi-final against Kilmarnock here next week. So that's a big blow for Tommy McLean. And a golden opportunity for Hibernian. It's Charlie who's going to take it. And he drives it home with relish. Check Charlie. That's his first goal. And what a vital one. 72 minutes got here. Did Chick Chanley enjoy that one? The fans certainly did. Hibernian won. Dundee United nil. So drama here in the second half. Brilliant penalty. Gave the keeper no chance. Drove it home with conviction and power. Well, there seemed to be no real problem there for United. Presley was in to provide the cover. He was shot with a pass back, then he reacted. And now United are in trouble again here. But uh, Dykstra improvises. running in but uh, it was a dire challenge and the referee is calling the Fort Aberdeen player back against a yellow card it's a good play by Pat McGinley good challenge there by McLaughlin and there's Charlie. Well, that's the two players who were fighting in the first half. They're combining for the right reasons now. That's a good ball through for McGinley. Still, it's McGinley showing persistence. Well, the flag has got up. Well, the referee, in fact, is giving the goal. The assistant referee had raised his flag, then he put it down again. The referee is saying, I'm in charge. The goal is given. Pat McGinley makes it 2 0 to have an end. 78 minutes gone. It was persistent play by McGinley. He got away there from Malpass, got the break of the ball, but he finished in some style as Seek Dykstra came to meet him. He flipped it over the goalkeeper. Perhaps uh, Lavetti had run into an offside position, but he wasn't, according to the referee, interfering with play. And McGinley's goal stands. Three now is uh, allowing a change to be made. Uh, Barry Lavetti is going off. 
Well, he's made his contribution this afternoon. He gets a pat on the head there from Jim Duffy, and on comes Keith Wright. The player who carries a goal threat. It's the 80th meeting in the Premier Division between these sides this afternoon, and it's been a fine one for Hibs, especially in this second half. There's no doubt they've removed a lot of pressure from themselves and the manager. There's still work to be done in the closing weeks of the season. But this is a big, big result for them. The whistle sounds. Jim Duffy receives the handshake from Tommy McLean, who has tasted defeat for the first time in three and a half months. Well, it was Hibbs who took the lead after 72 minutes through Chick Charnley. There's a foul by Presley, clear foul on power. Presley was sent off and Charnley finished with great style. Then just six minutes later, McGinley showed persistence, fought his way through, and although the flag had gone up, it was a passive offside decision against, I think it was Lavetti and McGinley. The finish well, clipping the ball over Seed Dykstra. The final score at Easter Road, Hibernian 2, Dundee United 0. Well, obviously, the first one's a penalty. I don't think there's any controversy about it. It's a, it's a penalty the referee gives it, and, and we score the goal. The second one, I think, uh, you know, Pat McGinley's ran through. The linesman did flag, I think he maybe anticipated Pat passing it, but he's, he's come through from almost uh, just inside uh, the United's half and scored himself. So, you know, I can I can see the, the fact that the linesman maybe anticipated a pass, but uh, when he sticks in the back of the net, I don't think there could be any doubt about it. Two controversial goals, obviously everyone at United unhappy about that. Well, you used the word controversial, and I think that sums it up, but uh, we've got nothing to say in that matter. I think that uh, we've got our own thoughts, we'll keep them within uh, the four walls. It was a sort of bittersweet occasion for you, getting the all-vital first goal, but uh, you're picking up that booking, which puts you out of the, the remaining games. Huck, well, it's just one of these things that happened, and uh, it went a long time without getting it, and it was an uh, absolutely stupid thing to do, but... That just sums it up. Well, that's just typical of chicken. He doesn't do it in, you know, sort of like the easy way, you know. He doesn't get booked for, I think, something like 12 games for us, and then gets booked for arguing with one of his own players. You know, it's very unfortunate, and, and I, I honestly feel sorry for him because, he's, as you mentioned earlier on, he was man of the match. He's been outstanding for us in a number of games, a big favourite with the fans, and, uh, you know, he's now got one match, and then he's away in his holidays for a few weeks. Um, but I'm, I'm more disappointed because uh, we'll be losing him for a, for a vital run-in, and as I, as I mentioned earlier on, he's been different class.